If your engine feels sluggish, your fuel economy is getting worse, or your idle isn't as smooth as it used to be, you've probably heard this advice before. You need a chemical carbon cleaning. It sounds professional, it sounds modern, and it sounds safe, but that advice has quietly destroyed thousands of perfectly good engines. Not slowly, not over years, but suddenly, right after one professional service that promised to fix everything. What almost no one tells you is that Japanese manufacturers solved engine carbon buildup decades ago without chemicals, without pouring anything into the engine, and without risking catastrophic damage. Their method isn't flashy, it doesn't sell expensive services, and it doesn't promise instant results. But when done correctly, it can extend engine life well past 200,000 miles. And by the end of this video, you'll understand why chasing quick carbon cleanings often makes things worse, not better. Let's start with an uncomfortable truth. Carbon buildup is not happening because you're lazy, careless, or bad at maintenance. It's happening because modern engines are designed very differently than older ones. Today's engines are optimized for fuel economy, emissions compliance, and efficiency above all else. To achieve that, manufacturers use gasoline direct injection, aggressive PCV systems, and exhaust gas recirculation. Older engines sprayed fuel across the intake valves, and that gasoline naturally washed away oil residue and carbon. Modern engines don't do that. Fuel is injected directly into the combustion chamber, leaving intake valves dry and exposed. Oil vapor from the crankcase and exhaust residue from EGR systems stick to hot metal surfaces. Over time, those deposits bake into carbon. This is not a failure of maintenance, it's a consequence of modern design. Where things go wrong is how carbon buildup is treated. In many shops, the default solution is chemical carbon cleaning. Pour-in cleaners, intake sprays, and miracle additives are marketed as safe and effective, but liquids do not distribute evenly inside an engine. Engines are designed to compress air, not fluid. When liquid cleaners are introduced, carbon doesn't dissolve smoothly. It breaks loose in chunks. Those chunks can damage valves, pistons, turbochargers, and catalytic converters. Hydrolock, bent valves, melted cats, and sudden engine failure are real risks, not rare edge cases. These failures happen often enough that many Japanese manufacturers avoid chemical intake cleaning entirely in their service philosophy. Instead of attacking carbon aggressively, they focus on preventing it from becoming destructive in the first place. This difference comes down to mindset. Japanese engine design follows a philosophy that carbon should be managed continuously, not shocked into submission. Instead of dissolving deposits chemically, Japanese engineers focus on combustion temperature stability, balanced airflow, oil vapor control, and correct operating behavior. The goal is not to remove all carbon at once, but to prevent soft deposits from hardening and to stop new buildup from accelerating. This approach doesn't create dramatic before and after results, but it protects tight tolerances, avoids sudden stress, and preserves long-term reliability. It's slower, it's quieter, and that's exactly why it works. The Japanese carbon control method is often misunderstood, so it's important to be clear about what it is not. It is not pouring cleaner into the intake. It is not spraying chemicals into the throttle body. It is not randomly revving the engine or performing aggressive Italian tune-ups without preparation. Those shortcuts create uneven heat, sudden pressure changes, and unpredictable carbon breakage. The Japanese method relies on controlled heat, steady airflow, and time. It requires patience, and that patience is what protects the engine. Everything begins with full engine warm-up, and this step is non-negotiable. Japanese technicians are extremely precise about engine temperature because carbon behaves very differently depending on heat. A partially warmed engine loosens deposits unevenly, increasing the chance that flakes will break off and cause damage. A fully warmed engine softens light carbon gradually, allowing it to burn off cleanly during combustion. This requires more than watching the coolant gauge, Oil must be fully up to temperature as well. Short trips do not count. This is why carbon buildup is worst in city-driven vehicles and short commute cars that rarely reach stable operating conditions. 
Once the engine is fully warm, the next step is controlled load driving, not aggressive revving. This is where most people get it wrong. The Japanese method does not involve flooring the throttle, bouncing off the red line, or sudden RPM spikes. Instead, it uses sustained moderate engine load with stable RPM and continuous airflow. Think steady highway driving or gentle uphill grades with consistent throttle input. This creates stable combustion temperatures and allows carbon to soften and burn away gradually without shock. Random hard revs do the opposite. They introduce violent pressure changes that break carbon loose unpredictably. The science behind this is rarely explained clearly. Carbon buildup exists in layers. Soft, oily carbon forms first. Over time, if conditions remain poor, it hardens into baked deposits that are far more difficult to deal with. The Japanese approach targets soft carbon early by gradually raising combustion temperature and maintaining airflow without introducing liquid. Soft deposits burn away naturally. Hardened deposits stop growing. Over time, the engine stabilizes instead of deteriorating. This is one of the reasons Japanese engines are known for smooth operation at high mileage and lower rates of catastrophic failure. It's not because carbon never forms, it's because it's never allowed to become destructive. The biggest mistake people make is trying to speed this process up. They skip warm-up, rev harder than necessary, or add chemicals just to help. That instantly turns a safe method into a risky one. Carbon control is not a one-time event, it's a habit. Treating it like a single fix defeats the entire purpose. Japanese technicians understand this, but many repair shops don't emphasize it because it doesn't sell services. There are no expensive chemicals involved, no dramatic transformations, and no fast turnaround. But it protects engines, reduces warranty claims, and keeps vehicles running far longer. And that brings us to the most important question of all. If this method doesn't rely on chemicals or aggressive revving, what does the correct Japanese driving pattern actually look like? Because this is where carbon removal really happens, and it's the part most people completely miss. Now we get to the part most people never hear explained correctly, the exact Japanese driving pattern that actually controls carbon buildup without chemicals. This is where the method succeeds or fails. Japanese master technicians don't simply say, drive it hard or take it on the highway, they follow a very specific operating pattern designed around engine physics, not speed or aggression. And once you understand it, you'll realize why so many engines build carbon despite being well-maintained. Everything starts only after the engine is fully warmed, not partially warmed, not just the coolant gauge reaching the middle. Fully warmed means the oil has reached stable operating temperature, internal clearances have normalized, and combustion behavior has stabilized. This typically requires at least 15 to 20 minutes of continuous driving, longer in colder weather. Japanese technicians insist on this because carbon responds very differently depending on temperature. When an engine is only half warmed, carbon loosens unevenly and flakes can break free. When the engine is fully heat-soaked, soft carbon becomes pliable and burns away gradually during combustion instead of breaking loose in chunks. Once the engine is fully warmed, the driving pattern begins. The transmission is kept in a stable gear, avoiding constant upshifting and downshifting. RPM is held in a moderate but elevated range, typically between 2500 and 3500 RPM for most naturally aspirated gasoline engines. Turbocharged engines may use the lower end of that range. The throttle input is steady, not aggressive, no sudden stabs, no flooring it. The goal is sustained airflow, stable combustion temperature, and consistent exhaust velocity. This condition is maintained for 20 to 30 minutes of continuous driving. No stop-and-go traffic, no frequent braking, no short bursts followed by coasting. This is not abuse. This is the operating window many engines are designed for but rarely experience in daily city driving. This is where many people misunderstand what actually removes carbon. It's not vehicle speed. It's engine load and combustion conditions. You can cruise at 70 miles per hour at 1800 RPM and remove almost nothing, but 55 miles per hour at 3000 RPM under light load can be far more effective. Carbon responds to temperature stability, 
airflow across valves, and exhaust gas velocity, not how fast the car is moving. This is why Japanese technicians focus on RPM in load instead of speed limits. The method works even in countries with lower highway speeds because it's about engine behavior, not road speed. When done correctly, this driving pattern targets soft carbon first. Soft, oily deposits that form from oil vapor and incomplete combustion begin to burn off naturally. Hardened deposits stop growing because the conditions that create them no longer exist. Over time, the engine reaches a stable equilibrium instead of continuously accumulating buildup. This is why Japanese engines are often described as aging well. They don't magically stay clean, they stay balanced. How often this should be done depends on how the vehicle is used. For city-driven cars and short commute vehicles, Japanese technicians recommend this pattern roughly every 1,000 to 1,500 miles. For vehicles that are mostly short-tripped, once per month is a common guideline. On higher mileage engines, it's often done before oil changes as part of a prevention routine. When performed consistently, soft carbon never has time to harden, intake valves stay cleaner, piston ring sticking is reduced, and combustion efficiency stabilizes. Skip this long enough, and carbon hardens beyond what this method can safely manage. There is one critical component that determines whether this entire process works or fails, and most advice online never mentions it. The PCV valve. The positive crankcase ventilation system controls how much oil vapor enters the intake. A failing or restricted PCV valve allows excessive oil vapor to flood the intake stream, overwhelming the engine and rebuilding carbon as fast as it's burned off. Japanese technicians replace PCV valves far more frequently than most Western service schedules suggest, often every 40 to 60,000 miles, sooner on turbocharged or GDI engines. The part is inexpensive, usually between $10 and $30, but its impact on carbon formation is massive. Without a healthy PCV system, even perfect driving habits cannot prevent buildup. It's also important to be honest about when this method will not work. This is not magic, and it is not a rescue technique for severely neglected engines. If an engine already has heavy, rock-hard carbon deposits, active misfires, check engine lights, or uneven compression, this method is not appropriate. At that stage, carbon has become structural. Trying to force gradual burn-off can dislodge chunks, cause misfires, or damage valves. Japanese technicians are very clear about this boundary. Knowing when not to apply the method is part of using it safely. So, how do you know if your engine is a good candidate? The best signs are subtle. Rough idle only when cold, slight loss of fuel economy, hesitation at light throttle, no misfire codes, no loud mechanical noises. If the engine runs smoothly at higher RPM and has no warning lights, but simply feels tired or less responsive than it used to, this method is ideal. It works best as prevention and early intervention, not as emergency repair. This approach also explains why Japanese engines have such a strong reputation for longevity. Their reliability doesn't come from special metals or secret designs. It comes from conservative tuning, careful heat management, and maintenance habits that prevent problems instead of reacting to them. Carbon control is traded as part of normal operation, not a service you buy once. That's why so many Japanese vehicles reach 200,000, 300,000 miles on original engines. Carbon was never removed in one dramatic event. It was never allowed to become destructive in the first place. There's also a hidden bonus most drivers don't expect. When this method is done correctly and consistently, many people notice smoother idle, quieter operation, improved throttle response, and sometimes a small improvement in fuel economy, not because carbon disappeared overnight, but because combustion stabilized. Engines prefer consistency. When airflow, temperature, and oil vapor are controlled, the engine simply runs better. The final mistake that brings carbon back worse than before is treating this as a one-time fix. Many people perform the method once, feel improvement, then return to short trips, ultra-gentle driving, long oil change intervals, and ignored PCV systems. That combination accelerates carbon formation faster than before. Carbon control only works when driving habits support it. You cannot undo years of buildup in a single drive, but you can absolutely stop it from getting worse. Here's the final reality check. 
There is no miracle carbon cleaner. There is no safe shortcut. The Japanese method works because it respects engine design. It uses physics instead of chemicals, avoids sudden shock, and treats carbon as a process, not an enemy to attack. Drivers who understand this avoid risky services, extend engine life, and save thousands in repairs. Drivers who chase shortcuts usually learn the hard way. So be honest with yourself. When was the last time your engine experienced 20 to 30 minutes of steady, fully warmed, controlled load driving? This week? This month? Or can't remember? That answer says more about your engine's future than any additive ever will.